what, what the mate is talking about. Yeah. What's up, family? Y'all ain't gonna like this one. One bit. Well, you know what? Maybe you will. Let me give it a shot. Tele Evangelist and Bishop T.D. Jakes reaches millions of people every single week through his vast empire of books, films, and televised sermons, all broadcast from his home base at the Potter's House Mega Church in Dallas, Texas. The man has over 30,000 loyal members and he employs over 400 people, making him one of the richest and most influential pastors in the nation. At least one of T.D. Jakes' five children has followed in his supersized ministry's footsteps. Sarah Jakes Roberts, now in her early 30s, has quietly assembled an upstart empire of her own with the podcast, multiple book deals, millions of social media followers, and dun, 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 sold out preaching tours. In other words, she's getting to the bag. Now, one may say, well, what makes her so special? Like she ain't nothing but a child of T.D. Jakes. Yeah, but you know what? She has an interesting story. She has been very forthcoming with the reality of her adolescence and young adulthood. She talked about how she was pregnant at 14. She was married to uh, NFL linebacker Robert Henson, and she's had suicidal thoughts. And I know what some of you are saying. Well, that ain't really unique. Pastors' children go through all of this, this type of stuff all the time. And that's true. And I was about to say, why is that? But I think we know why. It is the pressure to be perfect. It is being under that microscope. Because you know, like when you are a pastor's child, you're in the church all the time and you got to be pristine and you got to be polite all the time and you got to always do the right thing. And, you know, they got you, they got you ushering, they got you, you know, uh, in Bible school all the time. They got you speaking and you just got to always be pretty much perfect. And you know something else? A lot of pastors are abusive to their children. Yeah, a lot of pastors. The trip part about it is that a lot of people wouldn't even guess because most pastors, they come off as these holier-than-thou guys, right? These you know, good people, just, just angelic. But they have like, oftentimes, they lead a double life. Sometimes they lead, lead a triple life because you have those who are one way in front of the church and then they're another way in front of their family, their, their wife and children, and then they're another way in front of their boyfriends. Yeah, I went there. Whole lot of them like that. So, and then some of them, you know, they got girlfriends too. But, you know, and then some of them do all of it. You know, they just got to talk to something different, man. You know, they like to mix it up like gumbo. So, uh, Sarah, she bought herself a $4 million house near Calabasas. Not bad. Not bad for a person in their early 30s. Not bad at all. Four million dollar house. Now here's the thing, fam. Uh, some people out there are 
calling her the devil. They're saying that, oh yes, you know, like father, like daughter, she's evil. I heard somebody said that she was fleecing the flock. <laughs> Here's the deal, fam. Some people trip out on anybody, regardless of profession, who spends $4 million on a crib. But if you're a member of the clergy and you spend that kind of money on a crib, oh man, you about to get it. First thing they're going to say, God gives you what you need, not what you want. <laughs> what do y'all think about that? Is she going too far? $4 million for a crib. Should any member of the clergy have that type of home? Is that too much money? And what's reasonable? If $4 million is too much, what's reasonable? A hundred thousand dollar crib, two hundred thousand, half a million, a million. What's the cap? Public housing. Are you cool with your pastor being on public housing? Drop a comment. No more talk. What, what the haters talking about?